Hello, today I'd like to introduce you to two vehicles from our reserve, the Alpine Snowmobile and the model that served as its prototype, the Ski-Doo RD8. When we think of a snowmobile, we usually think of a vehicle with two skis and a track. Although this is the norm, it's not always the case. To understand where the idea of the snowmobile as we know it today came from, it's important to go back to the prototype of the first snowmobile called the Butterbox. It originally had two skis propelled by two tracks, like the model on display in the museum. But by 1958, Joseph Armand Bombardier had already experimented with a different type of single ski Butterbox. By 1963, Joseph Armand Bombardier was marketing a different type of snowmobile with one ski and two tracks, the RD8. But why these changes? Let's take a look at the 1960 Ski-Doo RD8 snowmobile. Our model is actually a prototype. It is equipped with a JLO engine, unlike the models that will be marketed with the new Rotax engine. For connoisseurs, this is a highly visible detail. For the first time, it features a fiberglass hood mounted on a lightweight chassis. Fiberglass is lighter than metal, reducing the vehicle's weight. Kohler and JLO engines are replaced by Rotax engines. Lighter and more powerful, Rotax engines reduce the vehicle's weight and increase its top speed by around 16 kilometers per hour. Let's talk about innovation. The RD8 is a utility vehicle particularly well suited to forest and deep snow conditions, thanks to its two tracks. Its single front ski prevents bushes and branches from getting caught between the two front skis, as on other snowmobile models. But why RD8? R for the new Rotax engine, D for double track, giving it extra traction, and 8 for the engine's 8 horsepower. These are some of the features that will be found in the Alpine snowmobile. As for the Alpine snowmobile, if it's based on the RD8, Several improvements were added over the years. In 1969, the first reverse gearbox was installed on the Alpine 640 ER model. What a revolution! There was no longer any need to manually turn the vehicle when wide bends were impossible. By this time, snowmobiles were already much lighter. This one was equipped with a 640 cc engine. Double 15-inch tracks, a bogey, a tandem wheel suspension system, articulated arm steering, and a double air intake. Now for a few anecdotes. The Ski-Doo RD8 was used at the 1964 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria. A very interesting detail. Given that the new Rotax engines used for this model are produced in Austria. The utilitarian dimension of this model has often been demonstrated at the Olympic Games thanks to its various features. Robustness and the ability to handle heavy loads. In fact, several accessories are designed to be towed by this vehicle. These included resurfacers for snowmobile trails, graders for downhill ski trails, and rescue sleds. Its front ski was designed so that it could be dismantled and replaced by a set of wheels enabling the vehicle to be used all year round. This 1975 innovation opened up new snowmobile trails, as well as maintaining the existing network. As for the Alpine snowmobile, it will be used at the World Alpine Skiing Championships in 1982, and at the 1984 Olympic Games in Sarajevo, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Fifty bombardier vehicles, including a good number of Alpine snowmobiles, will be used to ensure the smooth running of the event. A team of 11 bombardier experts was on hand. Drivers, instructors, and mechanics? Bombardier was also the official supplier to the Calgary Olympic Games in 1988, where a number of Alpine snowmobiles will also be used. Many trades would benefit from Alpine snowmobiles over the years. Powerline installers, lumberjacks, but also law enforcement. Now to the military. The Americans will be using Alpines in Alaska and on NORAD installations. 
North American Aerospace Defense Command. Between 1981 and 1982, more than 400 military Alpines were produced. In all, if we count Alpines for the regular market, 4,480 vehicles of this type will be produced over the same period. Importantly, they were white and unmarked. Joseph Armand Bombardier was in the habit of adapting these vehicles to meet different types of demand or to solve different problems. The ski RD-8 snowmobile and the Alpine, with their distinctive features so different from other snowmobiles, demonstrate just how original and inventive Joseph Armand Bombardier and the Bombardier Company continued to be and how this approach has endured over time. That's all for our Alpine capsule. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook so you don't miss any future videos. And above all, come and see us at the museum to ask your questions and see more vehicles.